Well, then, <coughs> the considerations here of this piece of Lady of Mount Carmel in Virgin, New Jersey, in Whiting, New Jersey. We have a few considerations on this day in 2021 when Father's Holy goes to men. Today is July the 16th. Uh, earlier in this day, this morning, Pope Francis issued a new motu proprio, Cus Traditionis Custodes, the guards of tradition, guardian of tradition. And he said it calls it well because it is a good summary of what the last uh, almost 36 years have been since 1984 when the first motu proprio was given by Pope John Paul II, in which he said in his ad quatuor ad hincanos, after four years of being the Pope, that he would allow a certain opening up of the Latin Tridentine Mass. It was expanded in 1988 by Pope John Paul II again in the Ecclesia Dei Afflicta, the Church in its affliction. Then, the duties of the Supreme Pontiff, Suborum Pontificum, Motu Proprio 2007, seem to expand again the allowance of the Latin Tridentine Mass. Then in January of 2019, Pope Francis said the Ecclesia Dei Commission, which was created in order to help bring uh, people of the schism of Archbishop Lefebvre, people overly attached to tradition, back into the mainstream church, has done its work, and therefore the Ecclesia Dei Commission is no longer needed, and we will replace the Ecclesia Dei Commission with those with the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith. Now, on, on July the 16th, 2021, today, the Pope has now issued a new motu proprio, Guards of Tradition. He has set up guards of tradition, as did John Paul II before him, and Benedict XVI before him, who were guards set at the gate of tradition to see that tradition was isolated, to see that tradition was imprisoned, to see that tradition was not allowed to be fully practiced or fully followed either in its doctrine or in its practice. And therefore, it was the time of the imprisonment of tradition. Today, Dr. Taylor Marshall and I'm sure many others said that this was a radical day, the most radical day in the papacy of Pope Francis, where now he is smashing tradition. He made a very restrictive motu proprio today with eight points. Eight points telling priests, telling the bishops, essentially, that you are to help end Catholic tradition. What has allowed to grow within the Novus Ordo Church is to be smashed. So what he said was that remember that all those who celebrate the Latin Tridentine Mass with the permissions of the former motu proprio of 2007, all those permissions are abrogated and removed. And any priest who wishes to celebrate the Latin Tridentine Mass from this day forward must ask permission of Rome because the Mass is a symbol of unity in the church and the unique expression of that faith and the unique expression of that unity is the Novus Ordo Misse given to us and it issued in 1969 on the first Sunday of Advent and called by some the 1970 Missal. And Pope Francis says all previous 19th anti or before 1970 Missals cannot be celebrated without the special permission. Any priest who wishes to celebrate the Latin Tridentine Mass of the last 2,000 years must ask a special permission from Rome. The bishop himself cannot give this permission. Furthermore, any priest who is celebrating the Latin Tridentine Mass today, and there are thousands that are doing this throughout the world, they must re-ask for permission to continue to be allowed to celebrate it from their local bishop. The bishop then is to submit his judgment to the church, to, the, to Rome, the Congregation for the Worship and the Congregation for the, uh, the, uh, the other congregation, I forget the name, the Congregation of the, uh, uh, the Congregations will be the new congregations to take care of those congregations established by Ecclesia Dei at Flicta. And they will tighten up their, make their lives more difficult 
And as we mentioned two years ago, when Pope Francis eradicated Ecclesia Day at Flicta, he would that in the days of the peace, the quote unquote peace of this conservative movement would come to an end. The days of this peace, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Oh, the door. The door. Yeah, go ahead and check your door. Is it good? Yeah, you know. The days of this peace would come to an end, right? So that there's not going to remain. The peace is temporary. And so now, two years later, we have this motu proprio. And in this motu proprio, Pope Francis also says, it was the mind of Pope Francis, it was the mind of Pope uh, Benedict, rather, the mind of Pope John Paul II, that when, that when the, in the, according to the mind of Pope John Paul II, and the mind of Pope Francis, this, I mean, Pope Benedict, the, the Latin Mass was being allowed only in order to bring people back into the acceptance of the new liturgy. Uh, the unique liturgy is the new liturgy, and the old liturgy was called by John Paul II an indult. It was called the extraordinary form by Pope uh, Benedict XVI. An extraordinary means the same as indult. It means the form that is no longer the legitimate form of the church, the form that is no longer the form that expresses the church, right? It's no longer that form, right? But now, okay, this is good. I heard you. What? <laughs> I know Father's talking. No, no, we're in the mass. I'm the recording. Mass. I'm recording. Okay. It's okay, right? So then, the so that in any case, so we, this form, the form of this motu proprio, is the form of the the form of the mass is no longer the the the, or the new the, the the Latin the Latin rite, but now replaced by the old by the new rite. And Pope Francis said very clearly. Purpose of the entire movement of Iglesia Dei and and the purpose of the allowances of Benedict XVI was to help people go back into the unity of the church, so that they would no longer be overly attached to the old rites and the old ways, and they would come through the new. And now he is disturbed that there is no longer a source of unity, and therefore he is going to shut down these masses. There can no longer be any new masses. And every priest that says this Latin Mass must explicitly accept the new Mass, the new liturgy, and Vatican II. But in, in 1984, in Quatuor Adiganos, when Pope John Paul II issued Quatuor Adiganos, he said the Latin Mass may be allowed, the old Mass, but only on the condition that there is the acceptance of the new. In 1988, the, new ma the Latin Mass was allowed again, with a little greater freedom only on condition that there is the acceptance of the new. In 2007, Pope, uh, Pope Benedict XVI said there will be the extension of the Latin Mass so that even one priest can ask for one faithful can ask for it, and any priest is allowed to celebrate it by the permission of the Pope, Pope Benedict, and that we're going to see, test this for the next three years to see whether this is workable or not, and then we'll reevaluate whether we can continue this. That's what he said back in Saborum Pontificum. But this allowance is because it's an extraordinary form of the unique rite of the Latin rite, which is the new mass. So says Pope John Paul II, but Pope Benedict XVI. Now we come to 2021, and we will see in, in this motu proprio, custodes, uh, the uh, traditionis custodes, the guards of tradition. In this, in this motu proprio, there is no new doctrine there is no new teaching that was not already contained in Vatican II, that was not already contained in the previous documents, Quattro Ariganos, Clesa de Adflicta, and Summorum Pontificum. All that happens is that now that Pope, Benedict XVI, Pope Francis says, Pope Benedict XVI said we're going to have a three-year assessment. Well, we had a 13-year assessment. And in the year 2020, Pope Francis asked the bishops to write in their, their, their observations concerning the, concerning the experiment. And Benedict XVI called an experiment in 2007. The result was this experiment was not so good, and there are many negative effects of it. And therefore, because of, the, because of the concern, Pope Francis is going to essentially crush the Latin Mass. And therefore, many souls are upset throughout the world. And uh, Taylor Marshall says, don't become angry, don't become violent, don't, don't say bad words, but rather be calm and be peaceful. And that we are now gone backwards to 1970. Well, let's go back to 1970. 
1970, the new Mass was, was uh, set forth before souls in 1969, the first Sunday of Advent. And in 1970, throughout the world, Pope Paul VI smashed it down everybody's throat. You will say this new Mass, you will say this new Mass, even though it is illegal, even though it didn't follow the tradition of the Church, even though it's a new rite that matches the rite of Henry VIII, of Cramner, rather, Henry VIII was the favor only the Latin Mass, of Cramner and of Martin Luther. It matches the Mass of Martin Luther and the Mass of Cramner. And that, and this Mass was crushed down everyone's throat, and the results of it were, all throughout the world, hundreds of millions of Catholics left the Church. There are one billion Catholics, and hundreds of millions of them left the Church, no longer go to Church. The faith disappeared throughout the entire world. It all but disappeared throughout the entire world. The families, Catholic families, were broken apart. Priests left the priesthood. Sisters left the convent. Families were ripped apart. When they grew old, after the Catholic school education, they left the faith. There was a massive disaster and crisis of faith throughout the entire world. Since the errors and heresies of Vatican II and its expression in the new mass of 1969-1970. And what happened? Some souls said, we are going to stay with tradition. We will stay with the Latin mass. We will stay with the tradition of our fathers. We will still continue to believe in the Ten Commandments. We will still do as our ancestors taught. And they were called renegades, and they were said to be backwards, and they were said to be too violent, and they were said to be too judgmental, and they were said to be too angry, and they were cast out of the synagogues. Just as the Lord Jesus Christ said it would happen 2,000 years ago. He said, the time will come when they cast you out of the synagogues. They will throw you out of the churches. That's what he said 2,000 years ago. And so we are thrown out of the churches. We're saying Mass in homes, saying Mass in nursing homes, saying Mass in, in, in um, hotels, saying Mass in barns, saying Mass in little chapels that we ourselves had to build over the last 50 years. What was the result of these same Masses and teaching the faith against the new Mass of 1969 and against the errors and heresies of Vatican II? The faith was preserved. And the greatest leader of the, leader of the preservation of this faith was Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, who in 1970, uh, 1969, began his seminary to maintain Catholic tradition. 1970 was approved by the Bishop of the Diocese of, of, of Fribourg, and it continued to this day, or not until this day, but it continues and continue to, to, to preserve the faith and practice Catholic tradition and be a beacon of truth throughout the world. So Archbishop Lefebvre said, I will maintain the tradition of our fathers. And many priests throughout the world said, we will maintain the tradition of our fathers. We will not only speak about Vatican II not being good, we will not only have conversations and blogs and publications against the errors of the day, but we will incarnationally do what our ancestors did, that is, say Mass, hear confessions, build schools, do marriages, establish Catholic families, do Catholic burials and Catholic blessings, and bring the holy faith of our ancestors to souls in the real world. Many souls today are, say, are looking to a new bishop, Bishop Cardinal, Bishop Vigano, and others to, to come forth. And Bishop Vigano is saying many wonderful things. And some are comparing him to Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. But Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, what did he do? He did not only say wonderful things, he did not only teach wonderful things. He stood firmly for tradition, and he gave that tradition to real souls by doing baptisms in the wilderness, by doing confirmations, by doing confessions, by establishing missions, by preaching the truth to real souls in Ignatian retreats, by going around from house to house where souls are being abandoned, by anointing the sick that the local Novus Ordo priest refused to anoint, by taking our church incarnationally to souls, and then providing young men who will be ordained priests to carry that faith to souls. This is what's needed in 2021, just like it was what was needed in 1970. And there was a new group of tradition, a new young group of priests, a new young group of bishops, a new young group of faithful that say, well, we have to be patient and we have to accept the punishment or the sufferings given to us by our superiors and we don't need to do what our ancestors did. We can reinvent the wheel. We don't have to do what Jesus of have did. We don't have to do what Father Hanifin, my old pastor, did. We don't have to do what Father Quinn did. We don't have to do what Father Cummings did. We don't have to do what the priests of France and the priests of Canada and the priests of the United States and the priests in South America and the priests in Asia who stood firm for the faith for the last 50 years. They stood up and said, you young man, you young girl, you will raise a Catholic family. 
You will live by the Catholic faith. And if you go to that diocese, the conservative priest, he will be thrown out of the church. And then what? You'll have a worse priest to take his place. And the conservative priest, his rules keep changing every day. Back in the 1970s, I will never take my altar away from the wall. I will never allow lay people to give out Holy Communion. But what did they do? They took their altar away from the wall. They didn't allow lay men to give out Holy Communion. But I'll never allow women to give out Holy Communion. And then they allowed women to give out Holy Communion. But I'll never allow altar girls. But then they allowed altar girls. I'll never give communion on the hand. And then they gave communion in the hand. And every time their rules changed. And what became traditional and what was right changed and changed and changed. But for our ancestors, the truth never changed. And the practice of the church and its essential practice never changed. We didn't need to change the rosary. We didn't need to change the holy sacrifice of the mass. We didn't need to change our hymns and prayers. We didn't need to change the Ten Commandments. We didn't need to change what it means to live a Catholic life. We didn't need to change the dress of girls to dress now like lesbians and no longer dress like women. We didn't need to change the dress and behavior of men. We didn't need to change what a father was, what a mother was. We stay the same as our ancestors. So that when the priest died, when Father Hennepin died at the age of 87, he could say and repeat the words of St. Paul, my old pastor, when he died in the year 2001 at the age of 87. He could say, Tradidi Kodet Achepi, I have handed down that which I have received. We must hand down what we receive. We have the same faith given to us by our ancestors. It must be handed down and handed down and handed down. When our Lord Jesus Christ walked this earth 2,000 years ago, the high priest, Caiaphas, who was the true head of the church. He was the true pope. He was the last superior of the Old Testament. And what did Caiaphas do? He tried to get the people of God to walk away from God. He tried to get the faithful to no longer believe in the faith. He tried to get the priests to not worship the true God that was walking amongst them. And he brought about the crucifixion of God made man. And he used his power of his papacy of the Old Testament to bring evil in the world. And it caused great harm. But what did our Lord Jesus Christ do? He brought a greater good out of it. For Caiaphas in his wickedness was not able to stop the redemption. Caiaphas' wickedness could not stop the resurrection. He could not stop the redemption. He could not hold back the hand of God's justice. He could not hold back the hand of God's mercy. He could not hold back the hand of God's love. And God showed his divine justice, his divine mercy, his divine power, and his divine love, despite Caiaphas. And so it must be in our times. Pope Francis is like a new Caiaphas. Pope Francis is using his authority to smash Catholic tradition. And he is saying that, you priests, if you want to keep saying the Latin Mass, you've got to write and ask permission. Now what happens if a priest who is now saying the Latin Mass writes and asks permission? Your name goes into a database called Troublemaker. Your name goes into a list called To Be Smashed, To Be Destroyed. And that name shall be eradicated from the new church. And that name shall be punished. Furthermore, the devil always wants a man to compromise his faith before he smashes him. It says in the Bull 1570, Quo Primum, written by St. Pius V, that every priest of the Latin Rite has a right before God, a divine right, to celebrate the Latin Trinity Mass. And this Mass is the last until the ending of time. It did not begin in the 300s. It began when Jesus Christ offered Mass on the Last Supper. It began in Latin already in the first century. <clears throat> and the essence of our Mass was already well in place in its present form by the second century. From the very beginning, this Latin Mass is the most ancient Mass of all the rites of the Holy Roman Catholic Church. And this rite is the rite that is most sacred amongst all the rites, though all rites of the Church, except for the new one, are holy. And this rite is, is the rite of the Church, because the Pope must celebrate and must be of the Roman rite. And so this Roman rite is sacred and holy, and St. Pius X said, St. Pius V rather said, no Pope has the power to prevent a priest from celebrating that Mass, unless he commits a crime, in which case, he, because of crime, he's taken away from him as a punishment. But no Pope has a right to prevent a priest from saying this Mass, and every priest has a right to say this Mass in perpetuum until the ending of the world. Therefore, no priest should ask permission to say this Mass. 
any priest in the number short on now will be heard being asked, I want you to write a letter on this day, July the 16th. <clears throat> this most cruel Pope, Francis, <clears throat> doesn't even give time for his mode proprio to take effect. He says it takes effect today on July the 16th. Then it'll be published in the AAS, Octavator de Satis. Then it'll be published in the Observatory Romano. And then it take effect this very day, July the 16th, 2021. And let bishops be, be, be and require of their priests to ask permission the same ask before this Sunday comes around. To all of a sudden shut them down. He also makes wicked conditions before you can celebrate this Mass. In this motu proprio, he says, you must choose a man to be in charge of all the priests who say the Latin Mass. The bishop must decide on what days this Mass can be celebrated. It'll be like the free tickets you get in the, in the airport. You get a free ticket for an airplane that has blackout dates. And there's 365 blackout dates, except during leap year, when there's 366 blackout days. Well, you have a free ticket that can be used any day. And he put all he put the conditions that say, if you don't know Latin perfectly, then you shouldn't be celebrating this Mass. If, you, if you're not considered pastoral, you shouldn't be celebrating this Mass. And he put all kinds of conditions, and you must accept explicitly all of Vatican II, and you must accept, accept explicitly the new Mass as a legitimate and right Mass of the Church. But this has been the condition, and both have been the conditions, since 1984, which is why Pope Francis rightly calls his document Guards of Tradition. He's going to guard tradition and not let it get out of prison. He's going to take all those inside the tradition and make them die in solitary confinement. <clears throat> he will not let tradition come out of its cell. He won't let tradition spread to the end of the world. He wants to kill it. By Caiaphas, the Pope before him, whom Francis is imitating, he also wanted to kill tradition. He wanted to kill tradition by killing the one who gives us the tradition, the one who hands down the truth, which is Jesus Christ himself. And therefore Caiaphas said, what further needed we have witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What will you of this man? And they all agreed he should be put to death. And then any priest who is going to appeal to Rome, let him know that he is being a fool. And any priest that is going to appeal to Rome, let him know he's making a great mistake. And even if he means well, let him understand that Satan doesn't mean well, Lucifer doesn't mean well, and modernist Rome does not mean well. And they are not there to help him save his soul. They are not there to help him continue the work of the credit of the faith. Our Lord said, the Blessed Virgin Mary rather said in the 1800s, she said in La Salette, France, Rome will become the seat of the Antichrist. That's what the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, said. She said, Rome will become the seat of the Antichrist, the place of his power. What are we to do when Rome is the seat of the Antichrist? Persevere in the true faith and follow the true and eternal Rome. The time will come when Our Lady will bring about the conversion of Pope Francis. And if not the conversion of Pope Francis, the conversion of the Pope that comes after him. But there shall be a conversion of the Pope. Between now and then, we stand firm for the faith, we stand firm for tradition. And in fact, we will see that today, July the 16th, Visa Lady Mount Carmel, is in fact a blessed day, because on this day, Pope Francis simply made explicit and clear in an open way what was already contained in the documents about the new old mass. So now let them face the fact that we must explicitly accept that which is evil in order to have the mass. And one should never accept what is evil to have the Mass. St. Joan of Arc was told, if you don't accept that you're a liar, if you don't reject the voices from heaven, you cannot receive Holy Communion, and you will be excommunicated by the Church. And she was excommunicated, and she was not allowed to receive Holy Communion, and she is a saint. And those that excommunicated her now burn in hell, unless they repented. Those who refused Holy Communion now burn in hell, unless they repented. And she is a saint because truth and the faith are bigger than legal Holy Communions. Truth and the faith are bigger than legal masses, <clears throat> apparently legal masses. Because a mass that is said that is a true mass, on the condition that you must accept that mass which is displeasing to God, it's not legal. It is not legal before God to approve of anything that is against the law of God, which means illegal, illicit. It's not legal or illicit to approve of that which is illicit before God. That's against the very nature of law. 
So the mono proprio of Pope Francis, which he gave today, and he says, I abrogate all previous decisions of Pope Benedict and Pope Francis, of Pope John Paul II. That their decisions will be abrogated. They were abrogated before they made them. One cannot abrogate the Latin Tridentine Mass. One cannot abrogate the Holy Roman Catholic faith. And every Catholic must stand for this faith. And our ancestors have been martyred and killed by their own superiors. Our ancestors have been thrown out by their own superiors because they stood for the true faith. We must do what our ancestors did. We must do what Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre did. Stand for the truth. And what he said in 1988 was this. I am consecrating these four holy bishops in order to preserve the Holy Roman Catholic priesthood and the Holy Roman Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Catholic faith. There may be in the next few days punishments and penalties given by Rome. We disregard them completely. They are of no value. And just like in 1975, when they suspended our Sister Lefebvre, and then later on they said, we're sorry, and later on they praised him, he said, so likewise, whatever penalties they decide to give us tomorrow or the next day, we disregard them completely because we are building the kingdom of Christ. We are spreading the Holy Roman Catholic faith and the Holy Roman Catholic Church. We are doing the truth and that which is right before God. That's what we are giving to souls. And what has happened? They're going to issue some paper. Now, many, many priests are in a state of terror right now. They need not be afraid. And your ancestors before them were thrown out of the diocese. Their ancestors before them were thrown out of the rectories. Their ancestors before them were declared insane. Their ancestors before them were thrown in the streets and had to say mass in people's houses and had to rebuild from nothing. And their ancestors before them preserved the faith, follow the ancestors. And those who helped kept the churches, like the Arians 1,700 years ago, they kept the churches. But the Arians are gone and they are forgotten. But the faith continues and we Catholics got the churches back. And we will get the churches back again. But we don't want the churches back if they don't come with the faith. Let them keep the buildings. Let us keep the faith. And if they will throw us out of the buildings, let us be thrown out of the buildings. We don't need the buildings, but we do need the faith. And this will carry us to the next generation. A great blessing may come from this motu proprio of Pope Francis. It may be the formation of some new saints, a formation of some new warriors who are finding themselves trapped in the Novo Sordo, who are trying to be obedient to the local bishop, but it's not working who are trying to appeal to Rome, but it's not working. I appealed to the Ecclesiastical Commission, but then they suppressed it. I appealed to the Doctrine of the Faith. Now they moved me to the Congregation of the Worship and, the congreg and, and, and another congregation. Now it keeps changing, it keeps moving. I know one priest whose legal case was brought before Rome in 1999. It is now 2021. His legal case still stands. 25 years have almost passed. And this case still stands, and it shall never, ever end. We don't need to appeal to the modernists and wait to see what they're going to do. Rather, stay firm in the faith. Teach the Holy Doctrine. Celebrate the Latin Trinity Mass. Stay with the Holy Truth. And priests in the Novo Sordo who are now saying the Latin Mass, please don't write. Do not write your bishop and ask permission to keep saying it. Do not ask that permission. You don't need that permission. You tell the bishop, like my father Hannafin told, my old pastor, Father Hannafin, was brought before our local bishop in Louisville, Kentucky in 1973. Are you asking my permission to say the Mass, Frank? No, I'm not. I was ordained with this Holy Mass. I say this Holy Mass. Are you asking permission to keep a parish going? No, I'm not. I am going to keep a parish going. I am going to keep teaching saying the Mass. I am going to stay with the faith. And I've just told you exactly what I'm going to do. I am not asking your permission. And the bishop shook in his boots and said, okay, okay, okay. Do not ask permission to do that which is right. Do not ask permission to do that which we're obliged to do anyway. Don't write letters. The priests of the Novo Sordo who are now saying the Latin Mass, keep saying that Mass. In fact, take this occasion of Pope Francis as a sign from heaven. You should not celebrate that new Mass anymore. Why does he want to force you to say it when you already know it is not of God? 
When your heart tells you it's not of God, your mind tells you it's not of God, history tells you it's not of God, the doctrine itself tells you it's not of God, and the effects of souls losing the faith throughout the world tell you it's not of God. And why is the Pope trying to throw it down your throat? And why is he afraid of you celebrating the Latin trying to take Mass? Why is he afraid of you teaching the true Catholic doctrine? You celebrate the true Mass. You teach the true doctrine. And let yourself be thrown out of the diocese. Let yourself be thrown out of the church. Tell your faithful, I apologize for having celebrated the new Mass. I apologize for having acquiesced to the false wishes of Rome. And as a true Catholic and follower of St. Paul and follower of St. Peter, as a true disciple of Pope Francis, I will follow Pope Francis as Pope. And as Pope, he has the right to teach what Christ taught. As Pope, he has the right to enforce what Christ enforced and what St. Peter enforced. And to be a true disciple of the Holy Father, I must resist Vatican II and all its wickedness, the Rome of modernist era, modernism and liberalism. As Pope, as Saint, as Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre said in 1974, pull out the Declaration of November the 4th, 19, 19, 19, November 20th, 1974, when Pope, when Saint Pope, when Archbishop Lefebvre declared what Catholics believe and what is necessary to combat the modernist errors. Stand firm in the faith. Don't be discouraged. And if they come and throw you out of the diocese, don't worry. Father Hanneman, my old pastor, said in the 1970s, I watched over 100 priests come through our home in the 1970s, our old chapel of Lady of Mount Carmel, where I still reside right now. How am I going to survive? What's going to happen if they throw me out? And Father Hanneman used to tell the priests, I don't know of one priest that stood for tradition, one priest that kept the Latin Mass and starved. God will not let you starve. There may be challenging times, but he will, lay, he will keep you alive. He will make you able to hold and profess that faith. He will make you an instrument to save souls. The priest is an instrument to save souls. He's not an instrument just to talk. He must absolve. He must anoint. He must bless. He must carry the gospel to souls in real places, not only on papers and on the, on the web. He must do these things in order to be a true disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, because the Lord Jesus Christ said, Blessed are the feet of the preachers of the gospel of peace, and feet don't travel by the internet. And lastly, today is the Feast of Lady Mount Carmel. It's a bad day. That it's a mistaken day Pope Francis chose. 800 years before Jesus Christ was born, there was a three and a half year drought. And the people were punished because they went away from God. And the king went away from God. They went up to the top of a mountain, and there was a great duel between Elias the prophet and the 400 priests of Baal. At the end of the duel, fire came from heaven, and, and the holocaust of Elias was burnt up, and he killed the foreign priest of Baal. And then he looked out to the sea, to the, from the Mount Carmel, which is a mountain in Israel, from which Our Lady of Mount Carmel gets her name. And he looked out to the sea, and he saw a cloud coming as a foot. There was a great cloud coming towards Israel, shaped like unto a foot. And the fathers tell us, this is the foot of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Well, Francis, look, and modernists look out to the sea. If you look straight down, you see an arid church. You see three years of famine. You see death and dryness all about. You see the success of the drying out of the faith of Vatican II over the last 50 years. But lift up your head and look out to the sea, and you will see a cloud of Our Lady of Mount Carmel coming. And when Elias said, you see that cloud? This cloud is going to arrive very soon at this mountain on this land. And so much rain is coming out of that cloud that this dry land that has been dry for the last three and a half years, it is going to become so wet and so filled with water that your chariots will be stuck in the mud. Therefore, go down the mountain with haste with your horses. Go down the mountain with haste with your chariots because you don't have enough time if you go slowly for the rain is coming. We know this about the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The rain is coming. The rain of grace. The rain that's going to dry, fill and moisture the dryness that is in our church throughout the whole world. The Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel is coming. And remember on the day of Fatima, after the miracle of the sun, they saw Our Lady of Mount Carmel, the children. And she is coming. 
See us coming to, and the, for, the, for a cloud shaped like a foot. And the devil knows what that foot means. It carries the gospel and terrorizes the demons. And it has under it the devil who shall be crushed by that foot of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Because she shall crush his head. She already crushed his head on Good Friday. She already crushed his head on the day when she said, Fiat Miki Sigmund Mervantum, let it be done in the according to that word, but she spoke to the angel Gabriel. She crushed his head when they married Sri Sankana, when in a great quiet way she told her son, They have no wine. And she told the, the servants, Do whatever he tells you. She crushed the head of the serpent, and she is going to crush his head again. So therefore, let us be servants of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Stand firm in our faith. And don't be afraid of this most wicked motu proprio of Pope Francis, which he gives on the day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And maybe it's because he can see out in the distance the cloud of grace is coming. The foot of Mary is coming. And you better go down quickly with your chariot to the bottom of the mountain, or you'll be stuck in the mud and never make it back home. But we are waiting for that cloud to come, and we stand firm with Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And we have confidence in her victory over all wicked motu proprios and all the wicked documents of Vatican II and the wicked document of Samorum Pontificum, which was a lie and a deceit to begin with, and the wicked document of Quatrodiganos, and the wicked document of Ecclesia Dei Inflicta. All that this document is showing is opening up the wickedness that was already contained there. Open it, expose it, no longer follow it, stand firm with the truth, let go of false permissions, and stay firm in the Holy Mass, the Holy Truth, the Holy Faith, and God will bless us, and we will have our victory, and Satan shall soon be vanquished. I'm going to bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.